Okay, again, uh, on the infobesity thing, I've learned to not seeing a lot of cool companies, and I thought I'd take a few minutes to share some general observations. Background, switched by nationality, born in London, moved to Saudi Arabia, moved to Sweden, scrap dealer, speech writer, the startups, was invited to co-invest, uh, co-found a Swedish business called Rap, uber-hyped uh, social gifting application. We moved it to the valley, we were cloned by Rocket Internet. Uh, the last two and a half years I've been working in the Middle East, in the, in the tech startup scene there. It was one of those pivotal moments where life changed trajectories. I was sitting at a dinner party and someone said, Aurora, you're constantly in the Middle East because there's a tourist, politi politically quite interested, and completely obsessed with Ocean. So what does the tech scene look like in, uh, in the Middle Eastern region? I don't know. I couldn't answer the damn question. So annoying to be a proper besserist that not be able to answer the question. And I just hadn't put my two worlds together. Google researched what's it look like and realized there's a phenomenally interesting uh, tech scene uh, in the region. And uh, I ran it in corporate money, Ericsson, Microsoft, Kia Cars, PwC, and I did a roadshow uh, around the region. Istanbul, Dubai, Amman, Tunis, Erbil in Iraq, Qatar, Cairo, Riyadh, and Beirut. It took me a year and a half, met all the startups, all the VCs, all the accelerators, incubators, um, and I did a uh, mini stand-up comedy show on stage about all the shit that we did at rap, all the mistakes, all the learnings, uh, how we were hyped as superstar heroes and then disasters and then hyped and in total raised um, 26 million dollars, open nine markets, closed markets, hired friends, uh, fired friends. Uh, and shared war stories. And, and that, it's an important part, and we've been doing it today, uh, sharing successes and learnings, and it's an important part of realizing where your strengths are and how you can attract other capabilities to help you grow your business. Because, as I was saying originally, it's damn hard, it's really scary, but it's the most accelerating thing you can do. I just wanted to share the, the starting keynote I did in the, in the region to, to give you a feel for it. So I would say, guys, I would like to take the opportunity to brag. I raised $26 million. The founder of Skype sits on our board. The founder of LinkedIn, Mr. Reed Hoffman, sits on our board. And then I threw big numbers in terms of downloads and millions. But that's not the interesting bit. The interesting bit is we built the wrong product. We pressed it incorrectly, we sold it to the wrong people, we went into the wrong markets, and I cry a little every day. <laughs> and you can see these sweet Arabs going, a fuck just happened. But that completely changed the dynamics in the room. So I had exposed my jugular, um, honestly, about what had happened, and then started sort of sharing some stories and, and getting people on stage sharing their stories. And hopefully in that, creating learnings and partnerships. I'd like to take four main observations. Uh, today has been about fundraising, and um, in my current life, I uh, at EPT Ventures, yes, we just closed a fund of 566 million euros. There's some interesting learnings in that. Um, I'd like to talk about selling the solution. And my favorite quote is, um, you can't build epic shit with basic people. And then uh, how to sell innovation in, in, in uh, less innovative environments. The key point in, in a fund of 56, 566 million euros, and I'm saying it so much because I'm proud, and the team, uh, especially the founding team, have put in a lot of work. And what does that mean? It means all the VCs that you meet have been fundraising. They have LPs. They have sat in meetings. They do nothing but pitch. We've had 350 meetings with LPs across the world, which means that the partnership that we're talking about is actually quite equal. We're doing this, the same thing. And the uh, VCs that you're meeting need you to succeed. And so by utilizing that, you can create the, change the dynamic in, uh, in the room. Also understanding what does the other investments look like? What does their portfolio look like? How do you fit into that? You're nodding over there, so you agree with me. But um, fundraising is literally not a picnic. 
It is a dance. And I think you were saying it correctly, Matt, it's dating. And in that dance, psychologically understanding who they are, what makes them tick, when is he smiling, when is she not looking very impressed with what I'm saying. Um, and in a key element of dating is to be a little aloof. Fine. Your business is phenomenal. You're going to do a hashtag world domination. The Excel sheet um, proves it. But it's really easy to say no. And by understanding that the VCs or any investor, angels, can say no very easily and will probably be prone to that. So you have to play and see, help them with that hurdle to come to a yes, investing in you. And that decision is taken in gut and then validated by Excel. And hashtag FOMO, yeah. I'm the only one doing crazy, stupid buzzwords in this room. Everyone else has been uh, factual. But hashtag uh, FOMO, fear of missing out, is, I think, a very useful trick to have when meeting anyone, media, uh, new customers, uh, VCs, and potential investors. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing someone else, maybe <coughs> coffee, I understand, uh, I'm very busy right now. <coughs> Give them a sense of wanting to see you, wanting to, to, to meet you, just like in dating. The, um, the core of sales is selling the solution and not the product. I mean, so many phenomenal entrepreneurs with the geekiest shit ever, look at my software, it does, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they're right, factually that's correct. But in sales, you're buying an emotion, you're buying a solution. And I tend to try to think about it in two types of solutions. You're, a, uh, you're selling a functional solution. This application lets me find houses that I can rent. This application lets me buy, which is true. Equally important is the emotional uh, solution it creates. This application makes me save money. This makes me feel smarter. Makes me look cool. Makes me blah blah. Uh, I had the privilege of working with Adam Nash, who was a VP product at LinkedIn, and he was uh, VP uh, at our business wrap and helped us with uh, our product development. And his thesis was, if you were going to build a consumer-facing app, you need to tickle one of the seven deadly sins. You're American and vile, and that's an awful thing to say, and we create gifts and happy emotions. And I started thinking about it. Vanity, greed. That really uh, creates strong behaviors in human beings. You might not address it in that way. And the example he took was obviously LinkedIn. It is a CV platform for you to find your next job or connect with people of a similar interest. So a growth look like that. It's a vanity play. Go look. 78% of this, the uh, traffic at the time was you guys looking at yourselves. Boom. And understanding that doesn't change the product, but tickles something else and creates uh, a different type of movement, and the whole product development was geared then around, what does it do for you? We were gifting, it's not about me being nice, it's about me showing off to you guys that I am nice. Again, a vanity thing. You can't do epic shit with basic people. And that goes for your customers, that goes for your CTOs, for your co-founders, for your investors, for your partners. Uh, I've been banging on about it, but Take decisions in the gut. I like you. The hardest thing to say when you are an early stage uh, founder, pre-traction, ready for hashtag world domination, you meet a schmuck of an investor that says, I will give you a million dollars. If you don't like her, if you don't like him, you're not gonna say no, and you will come back and we'll have this conversation in the two or three years, you should have said no, because you can't divorce, right? You're stuck in that marriage. <coughs> the uh, last thing I'd like to talk about is selling innovative stuff 
in a non-innovative environment. So, you have this awesome piece of software, really cool, you've understood the emotional need it creates in your customer base, you've perfected, yeah, you found your uh, investors, and now you're out selling your product to the media or to, to, to clients. What we did, uh, and it sounds very banal, and I feel a bit embarrassed, was we were so ridiculously proud that we created something that was innovative. Utilizing social media and the power of peer-to-peer -to, -peer to drive people from online into offline, showing a mobile app. Blah, blah, blah. This was 2011, so we were hot at the time. Uh, going up to the big cheeses of the big retailers. Mind you, I, we had Reid Hoffman on the board and we had uh, Nicholas Sandstrom on the board. So we got access. Assumption number one that was incorrect was that big cheese takes the decision in a, in a company. Not true. But you're very pleased when you have that meeting. Uh, high fives, you saw the concept, very innovative, mm, the forefront of where consumers want to buy your product. Yeah, yeah. Leave the meeting, super pleased. We've sold something new and innovative. And, um, and then nothing happened for months. And we were back. You were laughing. It's not funny. And we were back to meetings and we were frustrated. It was process. And we had another meeting. And we had five again. This is super innovative. And then realized, like the idiots that we were, that we were asking one person to do the work, someone else to pay, a third to get the halo effect of it, um, and the bottom line would hit a third, a fourth person. In a big American company, these guys didn't even know each other. They're definitely not aligned in terms of bonus structure. Um, and the way budgets were allocated, we were being very naive. But we were being proudly naive as well. So my, the trick is to be as innovative to a border and then help your customer, your investor, your media to, to, to buy your product. Equity Ventures is uh, growth in Europe. 1 million uh, euros up to 75, sweet spot will be 5 to 30. All the words you can imagine, software led, great team, great timing, etc. Uh, before a million euros, pre-traction is where the magic happens. Uh, we unfortunately won't be able to invest in that stage. I have built a product called Together. Uh, which is an in-house startup within the team that is a matchmaking platform for early stage businesses. It is a classic startup. We built a beta, we're testing it in Sweden, we're iterating. We will, after summer, roll it out across Europe. Startups, sign up together.uktventures.com. Your business, your solution, your ask. Make a film, we were talking about the power of video. Use your phone. Hi, my name is Aurora, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and for investors, it's an application where they can swipe carefully uh, through, in a hassle-free environment, things that are outside of their natural network. Because VCs think that they have a full deal flow, but it's usually uh, biased to where they are and who they know. So, I uh, invite you all as, uh, to sign up to the platform and, as, as they always say, use every opportunity to, to sell. Today has been a treat. Thank you very much for this.